owning that look. Yeah, I feel like a pharaoh. We forgot we live on a boat. <laughs> and things break on boats. That's I got wood! wood. <laughs> I don't quite it's understand. a necklace for couples. I don't understand the art. Oh, oh. Going Hulk works. Going Hulk works. You mean oh, there's two days I don't get back. It says the man singing a dinghy 60 bottle water. <laughs> you can come out when you're finished. What I like is the fact that the before and after shots of this project are going to be really boring. <laughs> but we're definitely posting that. <laughs> like exactly the same. <laughs> Last time on Red Seas, we collected our new solar panels and then promptly ran out of fuel on our way back to Indy. We bought some aluminium to build a frame and carried it on our shoulders all the way back to the dinghy. We used some unusual methods to build a solar frame in our cockpit and then, with more than our fair share of luck, we lifted it into place on the davits and added the panels. All that's left now is to finish the wiring and then we'll be good to go. We've had a slight change of plan today. We had this lovely idea to have a weekend off, to rest, to relax, maybe go for a sail, do something nice. We forgot we live on a boat <laughs> and things break on boats. So now instead, we are completely tearing apart our freezer and uh, we still need to come up with a plan of what we're gonna do to fix it because it's just, it's not working. It's not even as cold as our fridge. So join us in the madness. How's it looking down here? <laughs> it's looking like something. <laughs> That's always a good sign. I think there's more pipes in here than there are in the engine bay. This is like the world of plumbing. Oh my goodness. I hate it. <laughs> we have three different compressors in here. So the fridge, uh, handily labeled by my blue sticky tape. Oh, very good. Fridge, freezer, and aft air conditioning, which, you know, we've used never. <laughs> uh, and this was the connection to this stupid freezer that doesn't work and never has. Um, if anyone ever tells you that boat freezers can be improved, they're lying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've not had a lot of luck with ours. We're gonna break with convention. So there's kind of a, it's a weird bickering match going on that happens on boats, I think. And it's basically deciding whether or not a household freezer should be used on a boat. And up to now, people have always said no, mainly because they're all running at 240 or 110 voltage and not many boats had enough battery power to handle that. But with lithium coming on the scene, and that's what we now have, generally speaking, we do, yeah. I think. Yeah, fingers crossed. It should be at least more reliable than what we have. Well, that's it. It's like you go from being this thing that's made for boats but is made very badly to something that we all know from living in houses. And I had ice cream when we lived in a house. So I want to do that, and that'll make it better. So the original system that came with the boat were these huge kind of engine driven plates. They get very, very cold when we run the engines and they do stay cold for a long time, but we just don't motor anywhere long enough to actually make that practical. It works really well on charter boats where they're motoring an hour every day or a couple of hours and you know throwing the generator on to keep the AC on, keep the guests happy, but for cruisers- We bought a sailboat. <laughs> We have sails. We really try not to motor anywhere. So we then installed, or Ian did, uh, this 12 volt kind of conversion system, which we thought was going to be great, but I think it's just undersized for the space we have because our freezer is massive. So all of this needs to come out. These two plates are attached by wires that, uh, by pipes that join together and go through here. I need to try and pull this through from the void that Ian is in, and then we're going to try and cut through the wall here. It's gonna get messy when we cut the fiberglass. Woohoohoo! Got it! Nice! This is such a massive system. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, we could probably have just about installed the compressor at the other end of the boat and still got the fridge where, or the freezer, fridge useless, whatever thing it wants to be called. So that means that we can like repurpose that and put it in the anchor locker, keep the anchor nice and cold. We could have like, a, a sundowner's guest beer fridge. <laughs> I think there might be something in that. Like, the only thing I know about copper pipe is the more you bend it, the more brittle it becomes. Yeah, I was really nervous trying to pull that out. Anyone who does plumbing and things all the time is probably laughing at us right now. I'm sure most people are laughing at us right now. <laughs> Beautiful. What do we do with that now? Um, necklace? <gasps> yes! <laughs> I 
I don't quite it's understand. It's a necklace for couples. I don't understand the art. <laughs> You're not cultured enough, clearly. Are you literally giving me the controller? <laughs> no, because it doesn't work. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tepid shoulder. Tepid shoulder. That's, that's a thing. The name of the system. Yeah. There we go. So, as we were saying, that's it, so we can make mess. Fine. So this project is totally snowballing. We, uh, we found a domestic freezer that we could buy here in St. Martin, which is 220 volt and hopefully would work well. It would just... Ow! <laughs> It would just about fit in the space. We were gonna. We knew we were gonna have to cut the uh, the void of the old freezer a little bit to fit it in, and then we came to measure it properly, and we realised that this cupboard gets in the way because we don't have the height to slide the freezer above the hole and then drop it in place. So we were trying to work out if we could kind of take this side wall off and slide it in from the side. We really don't want to cut into the front because we know that we won't do it neatly enough. Um, we did try and get the wall off, but it is stuck on there really well with sealant. So our new plan is we're going to try and like cut into the side this way a little bit so that hopefully when we pull that side wall off, it takes the inside of the freezer with it. Because I think the whole thing is literally just like 4200 on. It's just bonded with glue and nothing else. It's really hard to reach with this chiller plane though. <laughs> I really hate the dust that we get when we cut any kind of fiberglass and we just can't avoid it if we're inside. So I'm gonna see if I can make a little tent around Ian and the freezer and uh, protect the galley somewhat. Genius idea, or I am completely asphyxiating. I guess we'll find out. Uh, How do you like your tent? I'm melting. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. Galley looks great, though. So, having hacked away this entire panel, oh wow, is now free. <gasps> yes. ba -ba -ba. And then it's really funny because this whole boat has balsa core all over the place and that's exactly what they've done. They've used balsa. Oh my goodness. And then the fiberglass. And then check it out. If you push through the, not the fiberglass, the insulation. Yeah. If you push through that. That's wood. That's I got wood! wood. <laughs> Tent time. Yay. <laughs> you can come out when you're finished. We chose a rather unique range of tools to get the job done and hacked away at the tiny chunks of insulation to try and empty out the entire space in front of the wall. Yeah, I'm doing this. The power of this bin. <laughs> nothing. Why have we gained nothing? <laughs> We have been at this for like hours now and we were just on the point of giving up hope and we thought we were going to have to cut in from the outside and then... We are slightly closer. It's moving! There's a gap! I can see a gap. Is this thing temptation just to like go all Hulk on it? And... I know, it's so difficult because you want to just pull it but then if the whole thing just snaps... Oh! Oh! Going Hulk works! Going Hulk works! You've even got a green t-shirt on. You can't see my face under this mask, but it's quite funny. <laughs> but all that's held out in place is this sick of flick stuff. Some bitch. Robert Long Hardy slap into this door and just straight to the cabin. And it's off! It's off. Yeah. Where Check out the side view, it's quite fun. You can this see how they built it. Get yeah, well that's happening too. The chaos continues, but Ian at least is in now in his happy place doing electronics. How's it going today? I'm totally back in my comfort zone. <laughs> All this yeah, it looks like work. It. <laughs> it's actually quite leisureful. Mm, careful. Uh, it's actually kind of comfortable, it's weird. You have a nice the, little seat to work on. Well that's it, from all the bending over backwards, the dinghy is the perfect workbench, this is great. So we're just changing things around this time, so 
Last time we did solar, which is up on the hardtop, and if you haven't seen that episode, you can find a link somewhere. Um, we wired every single panel to its own controller. So every panel had its own wiring run, it came back to its own little control box, MPPT, and that then fed the batteries. Um, so that's called technically parallel, I suppose. Every box is individual. Whereas this time we're doing things a bit differently, we're actually tying panels together. So we're actually doing two panels, tie them together, and then they go to one control box, and the other two go to another. So technically, I suppose it's kind of series parallel would be the term, something like that. Basically, these are in series, these are in series, and they're going in parallel to the batteries. And it looks quite neat. Uh, this side, not so much. This side I've already done. Look, that's tidy-ish. I know. Of. It's not too bad. Um, and yeah, just using zip ties. Which, I, I, someone asked me the other day, this is a perfect little tip. So when you buy zip ties and everyone always cracks open the bag at one end and then starts pulling them out, they always drop them because the bag turns upside down. So just cut a hole in the halfway point oh. and then you can just grab a zip tie from the middle and pull it out. That is so, clever. Top tip there from Red Seas. <laughs> if you ever need zip ties, open the bag in the middle. It's so educational. Uh, yeah, full of font of knowledge. <laughs> says the man singing a dinghy six feet above the water. <laughs> so yeah, we just have to make sure this is tidy enough, then run the wires back to the hard top and drill some really big holes. Lucky for us, the wing on this boat is basically hollow. So we're gonna pick up the cable here, run it through the wing, bring it out of this light fitting so we can grab the other cables and then bundle them all together and take them all the way to the side before finally dropping them down into the engine bay, back through the seat back and into the house bank of batteries. That should just about work, I think. Wires are almost done. How's it looking in there? Um, neatish, I think would be the answer. Yeah, it was a horrible maneuver. I've put the, um, the MPPTs, these controllers, we have bigger ones because uh, the panels are a bigger load, but they are right in the back of that locker. So <laughs> I basically had to climb my entire body into a small space, which was not fun. So now I just have to add the cabling that's coming from those uh, <clears throat> across to the bus bars we put in for the last solar install. Thankfully, I still have two free terminals on both bus bars, which is perfect. It's as if we planned it. As if we planned <laughs> Look it. Look at that. So we'll just wire them into that, and then we'll find out if the breaker needs replacing, because it might be a bit on the small side. Um, Will we find that. that out by it going bang? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, that's the easiest way to figure it out. Um, I'm pretty sure it is on the small side, but, you know, we might get lucky. I have not yet set fire to the boat or myself, so that's also good. Sounds like you're winning. So far, yeah. All right, this morning we decided it was time to sort out this freezer situation and we went and picked up a domestic household chest freezer, like a deep freeze, uh, which is great, but the shop we bought it from doesn't have a dinghy dock and uh, we didn't have a way to get it from the shop to the dinghy dock until Brownie found a wonderful person online, a guy called Peter, who offered to let us use his car and give us a hand to move that freezer. He not only helped us load it into his car, he even helped us out by getting the freezer from the car all the way to, into the dinghy, which is really cool. However, we then got home and thought, but how do you lift a chest freezer from a dinghy into a boat easily without dying? And um, well, the good news is we just fitted the electric Davy, electric Davids rather, and uh, we're hoping that we can just lift the dinghy with the freezer in it and then just gonna roll it into the boat somehow. Showing off now. <laughs> I don't know, the space isn't ready. <laughs> there, I like it there. Let's let's keep it there. I've always thought we should have to use one in the pocket. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, this is this wrapping's a bit tricky. And we'll have some like exciting music going on. And fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's do files. Wow. Wow. I love it. It's so cool. Look at these lines. That was great. That's good, but I'm going to show you what you did. <laughs> <laughs> I suffer for my art. Clearly. <laughs> One of us does. <laughs> <laughs> you sticking with it? Yeah. You're owning that look? Yeah, I feel like a pharaoh. Um, this is just what they look like. Okay, this one nearly killed me, but we are there. I've taken the entire lid off. That was one massive chunk of foam and fiberglass. That was quite satisfying. Look at that! That is a beast. We've cut out the hollows here so that the freezer should be able to, to sit in this void. The door is now gone, or the, the side wall is now gone. And I've even cut open this vent down here just so that the exhaust from the new freezer has somewhere to go. That actually vents into the sort of void where the old compressor was behind our wardrobe in our cabin. Now I just have to lift a freezer up and see if it fits. Okay. Oh. No! No! <laughs> You're kidding! <laughs> Two days to rip this door off. I don't think I had to do that. Okay, let's see if it would have gone in the side anyway. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't go in the side. <laughs> okay, so uh, top loading it is then. Oh, there's two days I don't get back. You know that whole phrase, measure once, cut twice? No. You know that phrase, measure twice, cut once? Measure twice, don't cut anything. Save two days. Why didn't we test this? So because we're dropping this into the void of the old freezer, the hinges on the new one are kind of useless to us. We're gonna take this whole lid section and basically mount it somehow to the original lid. The idea being that that'll still act as the top of the freezer, open and close but that this guy will be glued to the underside somehow. Nice timing. <laughs> All right, moment of truth. Okay, have I just glued the freezer shut? <laughs> <laughs> Your heavy sewing machine has been quite useful in keeping the lid down. Keeps making cracking sounds. Oh, it looked like it gave you an electric shock. That would be fun. That would be uh, not unheard of in this book. Okay. Da, 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 da. Something lifted. <gasps> it's lifting. Wow. Ah, check that out. Okay, so it. It's stuck. It's still stuck. So, so we need to lean it up, but. It fits. This is it. It's looking like a freezer. It totally is. This is, uh, yeah, it's surreal. We basically spent however many days it is putting this together. And now is the point where we put the wall back on and you can't tell we did anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, can we get it into position without any of the 4200 touching bits it shouldn't without touch? Without me gluing myself to the boat. Pretty much. Okay. You okay? Yeah. So then we don't have anything to hold it in place, so I'll just leave you there. Uh, I need you to do a bead of few hours. Do the prettiness. We've told people this trick before, right? Um, oh. <laughs> the, the trick where you smudge it all over the wall by accident. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just the uh, absolutely revolutionary Use bubbles to make it not go everywhere. Bubbles is dishwashing. <laughs> so. Bubbles! <laughs>What I like is the fact that the before and after shots of this project are going to be really boring. <laughs> but we're definitely it's posting that. Look exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sad. But we'll have ice cream. Oh, we can go buy ice cream now. <laughs> so this means that we can still get into the actual freezer if anything goes wrong. 
which it won't. And then you've slightly overtightened that. You did slightly overtighten it. It's a little bit wonky. Yeah, it's lovely. It's perfect. I love it. I've always liked it like that. I think. Woohoo! We might actually be done. Can we buy ice cream now? Yes, please! <laughs> Okay, so final test. We have turned the freezer on, we have filled it to the brim, and now we're actually gonna see if the ice cream is cold. I mean, look at this. Look at this. I have never seen it this cold. Minus 16.8. Our last one got to minus six. What I like is the fact that we have decided the way to test the freezer is to go and buy a whole pile of frozen food and fill the freezer before knowing if it freezes. We're optimistic. Has it paid off or is the thermostat lying? Well, I put the ice cream right at the bottom, so I'm going to have to like dive through everything to be able to get it out. Oh, it's frosty and cold. Look at all the goodness. Look at all the goodness. Ta-da! Look at this. It's not runny and squishy. And you can't even tell we did anything. It's like before and after photos are going to look barely boring for this one. But that was the goal. That's <laughs> true. So yeah, we didn't want it to look like we kind of hacked up everything and now I think it is fairly neat. Still, yeah, a few finishing touches, but I want to use my spoon. What delicacy. I want a real spoon. Well, if you use a little tiny spoon, it makes you feel like a giant and then it tastes better. How exciting is this? Ice cream on a boat. This is what two years of cruising has been about. Uh, excuse me. No. No, we have a freezer now. It means we don't no, need to finish the I whole want tub. One more skip. Full of the spoon. Oh my god, it's so cold. <laughs> it freeze. <gasps> Worth it. <laughs> we need a bigger spin. I'm surprised you're not just like drinking it in one. <laughs> Who's a happy boy? I basically haven't had ice cream in two years. I know. And I basically used to live off the stuff. How so exciting. We can live off the stuff again. Oh, we're going to get so unhealthy. Uh -huh. This is going to be so good. Fashion, darling. <laughs> <laughs>